Hey everybody, welcome back to Sparks Fire and Bale and Wire. Today I got, it's not a new project, but it's a project nonetheless. Need to put a new fuel pump on the skid loader. Need to get it done while I can so I can get my next real project for the channel in here. I'm also testing out a wireless mic today, so hopefully this will improve the audio on my videos. I've had a lot of complaints about it, and I've been listening and I've been working on it. So this will be a good test, see how this works out. fuel pump on this thing is right down in here. As usual everything's tight and hard to get at on these things. I'm going to pull this tube off so I can get in there a little easier. Now you can see a little bit better. It's right there. Try and get these fuel lines off here. There's that one off. I don't know if you can see it, but that line was kinked pretty good too. Really don't like that much. And have to see if I can find a little better way to route that. Okay, got both lines off it. Now I'll go about the fun task of trying to get at them nuts that hold it on there. Okay, new fuel pumps on there. I didn't film bolting or unbolting it because there's not enough room for the camera and me, or me for that matter. But I got it on there. I wound up cutting about an inch off of this line so it's not kinked anymore. That seems to be working good. I had to unbolt this wiring harness bracket, allow a little extra room. So I'll get that bolt back in, put the air cleaner hose back on, turn the fuel pump back on or the fuel shut off back on and I should be ready to go. Okay, the fuel's back on. Don't see any leaks. You can't see it on the camera but there's a little primer bulb down in there kind of like one of them squeeze bulbs like an outboard motor has to prime the fuel system. So once I get the camera out of the way I'll reach down in behind there and prime it and we should be ready to start. Okay, it's primed up. Still no leaks. I think we're ready to try it. I use my flashlight now because my handy little cordless LED light died on me and I cannot find the charger for it anywhere. So I suppose if I throw the light away, then the charger will show up. Make that standard shop rules, isn't it? Oh, I don't see any leaks. Now that the skid loader is done, I'm going to show you one of my finds from a couple weeks ago. I've been looking for a disc to pull behind that Alice Chalmers I just got done restoring in my last series. And I found out about a farm place that's about to get dozed in and 
so it can be farmed, gain farm ground. He said there's a bunch of old farm equipment out there behind the house in the grove. So I went to check it out. I did find a disc. It's an old horse ground disc, not what I wanted, but it makes some neat yard art. I'll show you a little bit of that at the end of the video. But I found these old light plants out there. I've always wanted a hit and miss engine, which these are not, but it's about the next best thing. And I'd never even heard of these things until about a year ago, and I'd never actually seen one until I found these. And I've Googled it on the internet. There's a few YouTube videos which don't really show much. I'll show them running, but it doesn't really get into any details in them. And Details are hard to find, period. But basically, back before that electricity in the rural areas, you could buy one of these. And then in your basement, you'd have a shell for two shells with a bunch of batteries lined up. And you could fire this thing up, and it would charge those batteries. And there's a relay here on the side. That's how you started it. And this thing would sit there and run until the batteries were charged, and then it would automatically shut off. And it was a 32-volt system. 32-volt well, DC is what it worked on. And I found out back in the day, you know, the, the wealthy people could get vacuum cleaners and all kinds of appliances that would actually run on 32 volts. I can't believe I've never heard of any of this in my life until I started researching it. But that's what it was. And this thing has been sitting in the woods out there probably longer than I've been alive. But I see it as a challenge. Let me see if I can get this thing dismantled and actually operating again. I'll give you a second here to, for your laughter to die down. But I think it's at least worth the effort to try. They're neat old machines. There's parts missing off this. This could take years. I may never see it through to completion. But I think it would be something fun to tinker around with. In my spare time, you know, like I got plenty of that the way it is. But whenever I get to a standstill on my other projects, I'll take around with this and keep everybody updated on the progress of it, or lack thereof. This is that little relay here. You lifted this lever up, which it's pretty much froze. I don't want to bend it too hard. But there's your on-off switch. Everything's out in the open. A couple of fuses missing out of there. Fuses there. There's a cover that goes on here that's missing. As well as the cover for the top of the engine. This wasn't an actual valve cover like you're thinking. It was just a metal dome with some holes in it. This is an air-cooled engine. And these valves were exposed just like they are now. You just had to put a few drops of oil in there once in a while. And that was it. The generator part of this will be the toughest thing. Because obviously you cannot buy parts for it. So anything I do I'll have to either source somewhere on the internet or make my own. But these things also when the batteries got down they had another battery. They actually were self-starting their electric start. Depending on what options you had when your battery bank got so low, this thing would automatically start, and you didn't even have to do nothing other than put gas in it once in a while and change oil and basic maintenance. But this one with the lift-up lever, I believe, is one that you had to manually start. Hopefully I can find some more information on that in the future. This side of it's pretty neat. There's a little float in there. This needs to be cleaned up. But there's an indicator on there to tell you how much oil you had. As the float came up, it would just move the needle over and tell you whether you're getting low on oil or not. And the carburetor, well, it really didn't even have a carburetor. It was just a Venturi type thing, as basic as a carburetor gets. This is froze up, but it's stamped on this side, or I should say it's cast in there. Start over here and stop there, and you just turn that lever over 
and it opened up a little orifice and then it drew gas up out of the tank through here in a Venturi type action and that was basically it for your carburetor pretty simple machine I think the points might be in there I'm not sure and as you can see this is pretty well buried in the ground it's been sitting there like I said probably longer than I've been alive but I think it's neat if nothing else will make a good conversation piece and I haven't tried cleaning anything or looking for any type of nameplate or numbers but I'm fairly certain this one's a Delco and they made several different sizes too and I don't know which size that is but Hopefully as I get into this a little bit, I'll find out. And about 10 feet away from it was this one. This one's probably too far gone. There's way too much missing. The cylinder's gone. The head's gone. Whatever cover went there. Just all gone. But there may be something I can salvage off of it and... If I can find somebody else that's got one that they're trying to restore, maybe there's something on it they can use. And this one has a tag on it you can actually read. It says Electric Autolite Corporation. Willis Light Division, as in like Willis Jeep maybe, I don't know. It's from Toledo, Ohio. So if anybody knows anything on these, maybe they can tell me. Because I really know nothing about them other than that they are extremely heavy this is all cast iron this one even had some type of amp or volt gauge on it can't read nothing anymore the glasses broke out of it but this thing almost looks like it might be some type of magneto maybe I'm not sure but I'm gonna have to rig something up to get this thing up on some wheels so I can move it around because it is definitely not something you're just gonna pick up and move around there it took all two of us could do to even get them loaded in a skid loader bucket to put on my trailer so like I said these this is not gonna be a full-time channel project just something to tinker around with I think it'll be fun to get into it and see the mechanics of how it works any old engine fascinates me. I don't care if it's a weed eater, or chainsaw, what it is. If you can put a wrench to it, I usually like to tinker with it. And this won't be a full-time channel project. Just something to do on the side here and there, mess around with. I hope at least a few of you find this stuff as interesting as I do. I think it'll be neat to tear into. For those of you that stuck around to the end of the video for the extra credit portion, I also found these pistons laying in the dirt out there. Again, totally useless, but they're neat. These two, since they're a set, I believe probably came out of an old two-cylinder John Deere tractor. Actually, I did find a mangled up hood off of a John Deere, I think it was a B, out there. No other parts of the tractor, but I did find that. And then this one, this is the only piston I found of this size. I have no idea what that's out of. But for size comparison, there's a one gallon paint can. And see this is about an inch taller. Six and three quarter inch bore on that piston. So whatever it's out of, I doubt it had a pull starter on it, or a kick starter for that matter. But I want to clean it up, put it on the shelf. It's the biggest piston I've ever seen. So I need to put it up on display next to the smallest piston I can find. Which somewhere around here I have a piston out of an old, I think it was a weed eater. Just a little, little bitty slug. I think it would be neat to have them sitting side by side. Again, totally useless junk, but neat conversation pieces. Well, that's going to wrap up this video. Thanks, everybody, for tuning in. 
I know that wasn't much as a project as far as projects go and the next thing I bring in here is not going to be a project either or at least not a long term one. But it's something I need to get done before I bring my next big project in. So I'll get that in here sometime this week. Get that done. Make a video to show it to you. So again, thanks for watching. I'll catch you next time.